Hi and congratulations on the purchase of your Robson XTT camper trailer. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set it up from start all the way to a full main tent setup. The first thing you wanna do is find a good level spot to set up the trailer. If there's a bit of an incline, any hill at all, what you'll need to do is chock the wheels so it can't move. So apply the handbrake, uncouple it from the vehicle, then use the jockey wheel to get it level in a front to back aspect. Now, let's put the stabiliser legs down. To set up the stabiliser legs, you'll need this, the speed brace that comes with your camper. It'll be packed in the front box here and it'll be there when you pick it up. To lower the stabiliser legs down, first thing we do is pull out the blue handle. To do that, just take a little bit of the weight at the end of the leg and adjust it down. Now you can put these at an angle, but you always want to try and get them in a complete vertical situation. They work a lot better that way. In this case, we'll just wind it up a bit. We'll put that on the hex drive and wind the leg up, pull the handle out again. And now we've got it vertical. We can put that back in and extend it down, wind it down until it's firm. Now remember, these are not a jacking mechanism. They're not designed to wind up the full weight of the camper. They've got small bevel gears in them and a little shear pin, which you can break. So you, if you've got a unlevel ground, use little ramps, etc., to get the trailer level from left to right before you put the legs down. Then put the other three down and we're set to move on. Our next step is to raise the boat rack. To do the boat rack, we need to unlatch it at the front here. Get them up out of the way. And then to make it easy, what I've done is I've grabbed a pole and I'm gonna use the pole to push the rack over. Now, that's up out of the way. Our next step is to remove the vinyl cover. Now we need to remove the vinyl cover. The vinyl cover is held down with these little bungee straps. There's a number of them all the way around. First thing you need to do is undo all them, then we can fold up our cover and get it out of the way. Once the cover's out of the way, we want to drop down our spare wheels at the back. Each spare wheel post is secured by two over center latches with a little linch pin in each to keep them shut and a stainless steel pin with an R clip. So remove the pins and R clips, get rid of the linch pins, and now we can undo the over center latches and drop the spares down. They're done, out of the way. Simply push the spare down to the ground and repeat with the other side. What I like to do next is grab my brace poles that support the back bed and connect them up under the camper before I actually open the camper. That way I'm not working underneath the lid and cramp for space. It's a lot easier to do it this way. Take the linchpin out of the end. Line it up in its little bracket here. Line up the holes, get the linch pin through, and we lock this linch pin over the other side. So that one's in. Now we can put this one in on the other side, and they're ready to go once we open the lid and we need to support the bed. Securing the lids are four over center latches to each side, and they will have one of these little gold linch pins in each one. I've removed them all round. To unlatch them, simply unlatch it like so. Now I'll go do the other side. The way this camper is designed, the forward lid comes in over the top of the back lid. So when I unlatch it, we're gonna open up the forward lid first. On the front of the camper, each side, there is an over center latch with a round hook on it. These are here so when we open the front lid, we can hook this through the eyelet attached to the lid, then, latch it down and that'll stop the gas struts from trying to close that up while you camped. So we get that open, 
ready to go. Now we'll move our lid over. As you can see, the gas struts have actually raised the lids quite a bit because they're very light. So now we can just push it over. We can pull this down and attach the latches at the front. Just in detail, put the hook over through the eyelet, push the over center latch down, now our front lid's held in place. Now we can open our back lid. Bring it down and we can attach our strut braces here. Take the linchpin out of the end and feed our linchpin through and lock it on the other side. Now we can do the other one. That's locked in. Now while I'm here, just going to bring my canvas skirt over the edge of the trailer and do that all the way around. Right, now when setting up for the first time, what I like to do is just back off the straps for the tropical roof. When you set it up, you want the inner roof, so the main tent roof, to be nice and taut and not tight. You don't need it like a drum. And if the tropical roof is backed off, it'll allow you to do that. Then you can come back and readjust the tropical roof so the inner roof isn't bunching up. Now we can put our steps down, hop in and set up the rest. The steps are secured both sides with over center latches, so we undo them. Now these are a little bit unusual in that they've got an eyelet on them that actually connects over the post on the steps. They're a snug fit. So you'll see the stainless steel eyelet secures over that post to hold them up. And there's also a post to latch them over once you're set up. So once it's in place, so we push the eyelet over the post, push it in place, then we can lock the clamp back and that'll secure our step. Now we can open up our camper. Keep in mind, there is a little hook latch here just above the wheel arch to secure the door and keep it open, stop the wind from blowing it around. So open that up, get it out of the way. Now we can hop inside and put the main bow pole in the centre into the Velcro. When you open your camper up for the first time, grab your phone and take a photo of the way the cushions are laid out and the way everything's packed inside. That way you'll have a great reference point for when you pack the camper up at the end of your trip. And also notice that the main bow pole, the very centre one, is actually out of the Velcro and laid down on the cushions. That is our first step when we jump inside, is to raise that up, attach it in the Velcro, then we can set the rest of our tent up from there. When you first jump in the camper to set up the internal poles, you'll find this centre pole is actually laid down on top of the cushions in a flat position. You need to bring that one up. Be careful, make sure you don't catch and tear any canvas. And once you get it up, there are two Velcro sleeves, one either side on the roof that you need to wrap around that pole. Also remember on the open side of the camper or the door side of the camper, there is an eyelet on that bow pole. And when you set it up, you need to make sure that eyelet lines up with the sock that goes to the outside for the annex poles as well. And also there are four other poles, bow poles on that side, which have eyelets. And a good measure is to get that eyelet lined up with the sock when you adjust the poles up. And that way you'll know you're in the right position and the canvas is square and even on the bow pole. But remember this one first and the golden rule, don't overstretch, overextend the poles and stretch the canvas because you could do damage to the stitching or the canvas. So now that our centre pole's in and it's extended up, so it's given us some room inside the camper to work, we can then move our way 
to the end of the camper. So start at the middle and work our way back. At each end of the camper, at the beds, there are three bow poles. One almost vertical, one at almost 45, and one well past 45 degrees towards the end of the bed. Starting with next closest to centre, put that up nice so the canvas sits well, then the second one, and then the third one. Once the third bow pole reaching furthest forward is up, then you need to insert two number nine poles underneath it in each corner. These will support it, they'll keep the canvas at the end of the bed nice and taut so the water will run off it easily and it'll also add some rigidity in terms when it's windy so things don't flap around as much. So you can see the one in the corner there is in place, one either side and then repeat that process for the bed at the other end. Then have a look at it, make sure your poles are square, sitting level, all the eyelets are in place in the sock and then you can move on to setting up your awning. When inside your camper, you'll find mixed in amongst the canvas is a couple of PVC sheets. They're quite long. They go the full width of the camper. On one side, there are Velcro strips at intervals. And on the bottom, there's press studs. These are to close off the gap between the bed lid and the edge of the camper. Basically, the Velcro attaches on the inside on the carpet of the bed, comes over the gap and press studs along the front of the inside wall here. That way it closes it up and that goes a long way to stop drafts. A hack that many of our Robson owners use is to get a pool noodle, split it down the complete center. So make two long halves of a pool noodle and pop that in here on top of the, the gap and then put this sheet over the top. Along the inside here is a lip for waterproofing so it stops any water that may get past the seal from entering the camper. It's an important part of protecting the camper. What that'll do is it'll give you a soft surface here for when you're sitting on it and you won't have the edge dig into you. So grab yourself a pool noodle, split it down the middle and put it underneath these covers on the gaps. When you first open up your camper, the cushions on the seating area will be laid out in the same manner that you would lay them out if you want to use it as a bed. So you need to make sure the table is wound all the way down, the cushions laid out nice and flat, and that is your third bed. Now what we'll do is we'll set them up and I'll explain to you where the various cushions go to turn it into the club lounge. Now I've got the club lounge set up, I'll talk a little bit about how we got it here. The table winds up and down, it's a normal RV table. There's a cap in the center here to remove that you push on this little oval shaped here, lift it out, and now what we can do is get to the winder. So it's a little fold up winder. It goes on the square drive in the center. Now to lower the table, you wind it clockwise, and that'll wind it down and opposite direction, anti-clockwise to raise it. When it gets to its top, you'll feel resistance on there. Don't overdo it. You don't want to damage the threads and wreck your table. So you can pop that back in there, put the cap back on, top there and it's ready to use. With the cushions, the cushions for sitting on, so the ones that go under your bum, they all sit forward of the back cushions and the zipper always to the back. So that'll give you a great way of working out which way they go and they're different lengths so they only fit in their actual position. The backing cushions, the two most forward, have a recess here for the center pole. So they will only fit one way. This one's a number eight cushion. It's a number six cushion on the other side. They've also got Velcro on the back of them. So it's a self-adhesive Velcro. So when you set it up, if you want that Velcro strip to sit against the back, you can peel it off, line it up, put the cushion in place, and the Velcro will stay there. That way the cushions won't fall forward. They'll stay put while you're in your camper and then easily removable when you want to pack it down. So they tuck in behind the seat cushions. Now the corner cushions can be the ones that confuse people. So I'll just explain how these go. Get this one out. Now, on the corner cushions, you'll see there's a short side and a long side. The short side goes towards the back of the seat. So there's a, a shorter backing cushion. These point inwards. 
and the longer one points down the side. That's the easy way to work out which way the cushions go with the zipper at the bottom. If you follow that instruction, you'll have no problem working out which way they sit. So you tuck them into the corner and they actually fit very nice as a friction fit and keep all the back end of the lounge together. It's that easy when you're packing down because you've been smart and you've taken a photo of the cushion layout with the camper packed down, you'll have no problems packing them away. As your Robson comes with a 120 watt solar panel mounted on the boat rack, you need to use a patch lead which comes with your camper to connect up the solar. The fitting at the top is just up here behind the boat rack. So you plug the Anderson plug in there and just down beside the base of the boat rack is another fitting for this one to fit in. Simply plug the other one at the bottom here and just push it in firmly. Now we've got our solar patch lead plugged into the camper. What we can do is we can grab this pole here. It sits here on the boat rack. It's actually for the solar panel. So if I extend that, what I can do is actually undo the pad bolts holding the solar panel in place with the C-clip. Just simply hook it under the handle, push it up, then turn it, and that'll sit up on its pin. Do that both sides. And it's a great way for the height impaired to do it. Now I can hook the hook on the end of this pole through the panel and push it up into place and rest the C-clip on the grill on the rack. Now my solar panel's up, it's horizontal and it's catching the full rays of the sun. And you can simply adjust the angle just by moving the pole to a lower rung on the mesh. To operate your Truma hot water system in your Robson XTT, you need to first come out and open this cover. This black cover is an MDC item. Underneath, you'll find the Truma factory cover, the plastic one. To open it, you push the center, pull the tab at the top, and remove the cover. Now, the flue's ready to go, so you can turn your gas on and go and start the hot water system at the control switch inside the camper. So there you go, folks. It's that easy and that quick to set up the main tent on the Robson XTT. But remember the golden rules. Don't overextend the poles and stretch the canvas. You'll risk breaking the stitching or tearing the canvas. Also remember, when you're adjusting out the main tent, zip it up, close it all up and adjust the poles. That way, all the zippers and everything will work as they should once it's set up. And before you do that, release the Velcro and the straps on the tropical roof, both ends, set up the main tent, then adjust your tropical roof. That way it won't pull in the inner tent and create areas where water can pull. It's that easy, folks. Get out and get into it.